Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the Medic Wall Plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today I wanted to discuss uh, moving and adjusting walls. And recently, um, I've made these uh, dimensions, well, more specifically plan dimensions, a little bit more interactive. And with that being done, I have just made it even more interactive by enabling dimensions for T wall intersections, as you can see here. So previously with the last video, we discussed windows and doors and moving those, and of course the overall length of the wall. But now I wanted to show you guys a little bit more about uh, moving these uh, T intersections, as I call them, and adjusting the walls accordingly. So <clears throat> the first thing I do want to point out is that um, <clears throat> with the wall dimensions, of course, you know, you have the overall wall length. Um, and let me go ahead and just click this, um, the tool here, the edit dimensions tool. So when you mouse over it, um, you know, you can go ahead and select those, whatever dimension you want to edit. But the, of course, the wall dimension, the overall wall dimension will change the wall length. And what that means is that from the start point, um, the length will basically extend to the right. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that by changing this dimension to say 60 feet from 50. And you're going to notice right away that the start position of the wall did not change, but the end position did. So just to be aware of that, and the end position of the wall, if you're looking at the wall from the exterior, now note that I've turned off the sheathing, the sheathing and cladding, um, just to make things a little more easy uh, to visualize here. But basically, if you're looking at the exterior of the wall, the right side is the end and the left side is always the start. And I've turned on the little markers here just to show you that. So that's the green marker, which means the start of the wall. And this is the red marker, which shows the end of the wall. <clears throat> By the way, you can turn those on in the uh, global settings. They're called the, uh, I think we discussed this before, but let's just show you again. So I call them geometry guides, and they're the start and end mark. <coughs> excuse me, start and end markers, and you can turn those on by just switching that from yes from no. So, anyways, that's right there. But um, so yeah, um, if you do want to extend the, you know, the start position, then what you would want to do is use the stretch tool, right? So the stretch tool is this tool right here. If we click that, and then we select our wall. You'll notice you've got the highlight. We go ahead and click inside this circle somewhere. And you can then um, extend and start and do whatever. Let's put it, let's, let's, let's bump it back to the length of this wall right here. So basically two feet back, right? So now you notice that <clears throat> the position of everything stayed the same. However, um, uh, basically, let's regen that wall one time here. Um, actually, <clears throat> when it did position, it, it, it needed a regen, but, and that's because of these T intersections. But basically what happens is, is if you do want to move the start position of the wall, you want to use the stretch tool to do that. Then you can get to the start and move that. Okay, so let's um, just quickly summarize the ways in which you can modify walls. So if you want to change the wall position, you now basically have two uh, ways of changing it. Uh, it well, basically, when I say wall position, I mean, if you want to move the wall laterally or basically perpendicular to its direction, you basically have two ways of doing that. You can use the wall move tool, which is this one right here. And if we do that, we can, um, <clears throat> you know, move it, move it this way or move it back this way. So let's go ahead and let's um, actually I'm gonna turn my grid back on real quick here. So I have something to reference against. So let's go ahead and move that back three feet. Okay. First thing you notice though when you do that is that this wall that it's teeing into does not update, and that's that is by design, I guess. Um, it's it's not it it does you know obviously adjust this wall to extend with it, but this wall did not uh, update. But that's not a big deal. We just regen this wall, and it readjusts itself and gets the dimensions back. Okay. So that's one way of moving the wall laterally. Now, though, um, with the dimensions being interactive for T intersections, now we can actually do the exact same thing, essentially. But now we can just do it with the dimensions themselves. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to set that to 7 feet. 
And with that, with that, <clears throat> with that tool, you'll notice that it did actually uh, regen the primary wall that the dimension was edited on. So basically, it's it, it's slightly different, um, but it uh, it it does take care of that for you. So just just to be aware of that. So basically, if you want to move the walls laterally. You can edit the dimensions or you can use the wall move tool. You can also actually just go ahead and move this wall with the native tools, you know, move it actually in the model. Um, but if you do that, you will, you will need to regen the wall it tees into and you will need to probably um, extend or shrink or, you know, <coughs> this uh, wall that is teeing into it. And, and if you do that, um, basically, the, you know, the walls will still be connected. And just to note, when it comes to connections between walls in the plugin, so this wall, for instance, really has no database or way of, or it doesn't have any way of actually storing which walls are intersected into it. Um, that's not how the plugin actually works. What happens is when the wall is actually built or regenerated, <coughs> excuse me, um, it will actually look for connected walls, walls that are touching it uh, at the framing level, and then it will um, adjust accordingly. And when I say that, what I, what I mean is, if you look at the start and end positions of any of these walls that actually touch this wall, you'll notice they're coincident right to that framing bottom plate, right? And so that is how essentially the plugin detects what walls are teed into it. And then, of course, it puts your uh, you know your studs here and your cutout of the top plate uh, to adjust for that so yeah it's not actually storing um, connected walls it's just detecting them and same thing goes to like with corners when you have corners like this this wall here it doesn't know that these it, it's not storing information about these two walls being connected to it all it knows is that when it gets regenerated if those walls are coincident at its corners then it knows that you know they're they're coincident and and that is something that uh, it's essentially aware of I guess so let, let's talk about now what happens here when you adjust this dimension here so this is a little another little gotcha I guess or something you need to be aware of um, if you adjust the the total wall length of this of this wall like this 24 feet dimension here it is not going to um, adjust this um this wall or or move it okay so let's demonstrate that so if i change this right here uh, let's get my cursor on it okay let's go ahead and put 26 feet for instance okay notice it you know extended the wall but the this other wall just stayed where it was okay so you know that may or it may or may not be so, what you want um but that's just by design now if you want both of these walls to move well then typically what you want to do is use the wall move tool so you would click this and then you know you would extend it out wherever and you notice that um, both walls were extended with it however you will note that the position of these windows within these walls stayed the same and if they were centered then they're no longer be centered because this wall stayed relative to this origin 12 feet and this one stayed 12 feet as well so then if you did want those centered back up, well, then, of course, you'd have to go here into the move opening um, thing. Or actually, we can we can move the opening like that. Um, let's say we want to move two feet, which does the same thing. Or we can use the dimension tool and we can change this here to 14 feet as well. So basically, there's there's a few ways to skin this cat here. I mean, it just depends which which is easier. I think actually the dimension editing thing. <coughs> excuse me, is um, it, it, I think it, it actually maybe is a little easier and it's just quicker to quickly change those dimensions because they're right there for you. So anyways, um, yeah, I think uh, I think the T-wall intersection um, ability to change positions of these interior walls is, is helpful. Um, so let's go ahead and demonstrate that one more time. So, oh, and that, one thing I forgot to point out as well so when you're going to edit the position of this wall or position of this window or position of this door or anything for that matter, what you want to do is you want to look at your dimensions and basically all the dimensions 
to the left of the item you want to change essentially that's the dimension that's going to change that so for this door it would be this five foot dimension or for this t-wall intersection it's a six foot dimension and this window is this uh, four foot dimension so let's go ahead and just demonstrate that real quick so we'll change that let's say to three and then let's just went to seven let's change that to eight And again, notice how it drug the uh, wall that's uh, teed into this wall. It extended the wall back in here, as well as moving this wall and then regening this wall. So a, a lot going on here with this um, this dimension edit tool now, actually. So I think it complements the plugin quite well and adds efficiency and um, functionality overall. Anyways, I think that pretty much covers everything I've wanted to talk about with moving and adjusting walls. Again, um, when it comes to moving and adjusting walls, you can always move any of these walls manually just within um, you know, the uh, native tools, what have you. And there's, nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. And if you do that, the T intersections, you know, if you slide it along these walls parallel to each other, you just have to regen the primary wall and it will adjust. And you know, and you can reconnect walls. In fact, let's let's go ahead and demonstrate that before I end this video here. So if I decided, you know, just using the native tools, nothing fancy here. I wanted to bump this back two feet, and then um, <clears throat> this this particular wall, for instance, I um, you know I don't. I mean, I could just shove it over, and it'll reconnect. But let's 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 demonstrate that. Um, <clears throat> so let's just move this wall kind of out of the way. Uh, so it's where it's not touching this other wall and now you know notice we've got these two walls are disconnected and this wall's been moved so if we regen this wall here um, it goes ahead you know we go ahead and we update that and everything's good and then if we re regen this wall notice that T intersection disappears but now we're saying wait a sec we want this T intersection back um, so let's go ahead and just move this um, Oh, wrong one. Let's just move this back. All we got to do is make sure we got it, you know, properly um, abutting. Actually, that's not quite right. We want to move that. Sorry, let me get this right here. We want it like that. Okay. So really, what's important is this point here at the base, the the, the end or the start can, of the wall will basically touch the uh, framing. So once we do that, it will detect it. And if we regen this wall, then we should have it putting that framing back in there like it should, yes. And again, it demonstrates that yes, you can use the native tools, you can move stuff around, and then you just have to regen the walls and then it'll auto detect everything again. But okay, so we've got native tools, we have the regular uh, move wall tool, which is good for moving walls perpendicular um, to their length. Uh, we've got the shrink and stretch tool, which can stretch tool or shrink and stretch the walls, and you know basically along their length. And which the nice thing about this is that it will allow you to either uh, select the end or the start of the wall and then shrink accordingly or stretch accordingly. <coughs> um, you can always, of course, go in. And edit a wall and if I do that um, you know we can change that from 18 feet to 20 feet the thing about this though is if you do this it will extend the wall the start position will stay in the same place it'll extend the end position of the wall so it's probably not quite as flexible as the, the stretch tool but it allows you to adjust the, the length as well and then uh, I think think other than the, that it's just uh, the dimension tool and the dimension tool also allows you to shrink and st or sh stretch the wall sorry but again it's the same as the um, editing the length it just essentially lengthens or, or shrinks the wall and keeps the start position at the same position so for instance <clears throat> now we have this final dimension right here what I call the wall closing dimension it, whether you edit the overall dimension let's hide this uh, grid for a second here I'll do that right here so whether you edit this dimension right here the 50 feet or 60 feet or whether you edit um, 
the um, the 21 feet, you're basically going to get the same result. It's going to edit the overall length of the wall. So, like for instance, let's set this at 20 feet. And so, all right, as you can see, you've edited it and you've moved the end of the wall and not the start. So, yeah, lots of ways to do basically the same thing, essentially, but it's just whatever uh, is convenient for you and whatever seems like the most intuitive. Um, I think, I think though, that the, <clears throat> this dimension editing tool really does uh, just make things a little bit more intuitive and, and more efficient, in my opinion. So I'm glad we've, uh, we've addressed this. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm really glad that we have this tool that's been added. So, anyways, if you have any other suggestions, um, please uh, fire them out to me. Uh, email or phone is probably the best. And uh, again, thank you guys for your support, and we will talk to you later.